All right, in this layer, in, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about soil classification. So classification means that we're going to call a soil sand or silt or clay, classify it in some way, gravel, cobbles, boulders. Um, and there, there, is a, a, there are a number of formal classification systems that exist. In North America today, only really two classification systems are commonly used in practice. The one that we'll use primarily or almost predominantly in this class is the Unified Soil Classification System. It's the most common one really for geotechnical applications and that's where we'll focus our attention. If you work in pavements, which actually is a pretty important area of geotechnical engineering, then it's common to use the AASHTO classification system here. AASHTO is the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. Um, it's used for uh, classifying subgrade under pavements and even parts of the, the pavement soil, the gravels that are put down um, right below the, you know, the concrete or asphalt layer. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, Unified Soil Classification System, USCS. So it was developed by Arthur Casagrande in coordination with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Department of the Interior. Uh, back in the, I think, 1920s through 40s, something like that. The fundamental concept of the USCS is that the coarse grain soils, the sands and the gravels, are classified based on grain size distribution. So you, you plot grain, you know, percent passing versus grain size, and you can look at that uh, grain size distribution chart and decide whether the sand or gravel is well graded, uniform, and so forth. So it's not enough just to say sand or gravel. We're going to add some gradation qualifiers to that classification. And it's important to do that because it tells us something about the mechanical behavior of the soil. Uh, but then the USCS does not use grain size to classify fine grain soils. It uses the Atterberg limits instead. So in order to do a classification, we need to do uh, a grain size curve and or an Atterberg limits test. There's some soils where you only need a grain size curve, some soils where you only need Atterberg limits, and some soils where you need both. You don't have to do any other tests to classify the soil. Um, okay, and, and the grain size curve is limited only to a sieve analysis. You don't have to do the hydrometer part for the fines, right? The fines are handled by Atterberg limits. Um, okay, so here I'm going to switch over now to the PowerPoint. And uh, this is the USCS definition for particle size, um, size ranges, and symbols. So the, the, one of the criticisms of the USCS whoops, that makes it kind of ill-suited toward pavements is that, um, what am I doing? There we go. That's, that's what I wanted, the laser pointer. Uh, it's not very good at dealing with boulders and cobbles. Okay, that could be important for subgrade. A lot of the time we're using oversized particles, including gravel, but sometimes bigger particles. There's no symbol for those. They do have grain sizes. Boulders are greater than 300 millimeters, about like that. Uh, cobbles are 75 millimeters to 300 millimeters, so intermediate between boulders and gravel. But we don't do a grain size curve for those materials and further classify them. It's based purely on particle sizes. Then for gravel, we go from 75 millimeters down to the number four sieve, which is 4.75 millimeters. So that's the, the range of sizes for gravel. And coarse gravel is, is 19 to 75 millimeters, where fine gravel is 4.75 to 19 millimeters. Then we get into the sands, and we further grade sands into coarse, medium, and fine. So coarse sands are between the number four and the number 10 sieve, so about two millimeters to 4.75 millimeters. Medium is the number 10 to the number 40, and fine grain or fine sands are the number 40 to the number 200 sieve. Okay, and then we get down to um, silt, and this, this shouldn't say symbol, <laughs> that should just be a capital S. So for gravel, we use a capital G, for sand, we use a capital S. Then we come to silt. Um, silt doesn't have a specific grain size range, you use Atterberg limits. But the fines are the fraction that are smaller than the number 200 sieve, right? So smaller than 0.075 millimeters, but within those fines, we don't use grain size anymore, we use Atterberg limits. 
Um, S was already taken for sand, so we use M for silt, right? M is the uh, symbol we use for the silts. Then we have clay, which uh, again, you use Atterberg limits and plot on the plasticity chart. Okay, and then there are organic soils for which we use an O. And we classify organic soils in the same way that we classify clay and silt based on the Casa Grande plasticity chart. And, you know, you might have CL or OL, right? So in that region with the plasticity, uh, the liquid limit less than 50 and plotting above the A-line. If, if there's an adequate amount of organic content in the soil, we would call it OL instead of CL. And then there's also peat. So peat is m more highly organic than organic soil. This would be like potting soil has to be very highly organic and that has the symbol PT. Okay, in addition to the soil type symbols here, we also have two additional symbols that we use for coarse grained soil. Um, one of them is well graded for which we have a W and that means that there's a broad range of grain sizes present in this soil. So for example, if you had a gravel that was well graded, say you had coarse gravel and fine gravel and it spanned a lot of different sizes altogether, you would have GW. So the soil symbol comes first and then the modifier for gradation comes second. If you have a really uniform gravel, that would be poorly graded, which is a P, so you would have GP. Um, poor, you know, I'll, I'll go back to this again. The word poorly doesn't necessarily mean bad. Sometimes we want a really uniform gravel and well graded doesn't necessarily mean good. Right, so you know, it, well graded soils tend to be denser because the small particles can fill the void spaces better, whereas poorly graded tend to have more void space, but sometimes we want those properties. Uh, okay, and then for liquid limit symbols, the high liquid limit, higher than 50, uh, we use the symbol H, so you'd have CH or MH or OH. For PEAT, we don't use any of these symbols, it's just PT. And then for low liquid limit, below 50%, we use L, so CL or ML. H is for high plasticity, L is for low plasticity. Um, okay, I think I'm going to go back to this. One thing about grain size curves. All right, now the way that we come up with whether we have a W. Uh, or a P, a well-graded or a poorly-graded soil, is to use um, two different constants that we derive from the grain size distribution curve. The first one is the coefficient of uniformity, and it's equal to D60 divided by D10. Now let me explain what these D values mean. So here's a uh, percent passing versus grain size curve. So this is our grain size distribution curve, cumulative distribution function where uh, grain size is um, decreasing here from left to right. So this is the U.S. standard. Sometimes the curve would be backward if you plotted that way instead, if it increases from left to right. Either way, you can easily find D60 and D10. So what you do is you go to 60% passing, come across, find where that intersects the curve. The corresponding grain size is D60. So these would have units of millimeters typically although the coefficient of uniformity is dimensionless because we're dividing those two by each other. Uh, similarly, D10 is here at 10% passing, and then D30 is right there in between those two at 30% passing. Uh, so you can see that if the D60 size is really big compared to the D10 size, that means that there's a lot of different grain sizes in there, right? So a big CU, would be well-graded soil. If, D, if, if you have one grain size, you know, we, we talked about this before, then you would have a step function. Like let's say that all of the grains were at the D60 size. Well now D60 and D10 would be exactly the same number and CU would be one. So if you have a low number for the coefficient of uniformity, that tells you that it's uh, um, poorly graded or uniformly graded. Okay, and then there's also the coefficient of curvature which is D30 squared divided by D10 times D60. So you need all three numbers in order to fully classify the soil, and we'll end up using CC and CU. Um, and the, the CC term is telling you, kind of within the D60 and D10 values, how curved is it, right? So that one's kind of moderately curved. It could be totally a flat line. 
It could be really curved like that, so the CC is telling you how quickly it's varying within that range. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and show you the classification table. So basically everything you need to know about soil classification using the USCS is right here in this table. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to follow the table, so let me walk you through some parts of it. It's really logical, so it's not going to be difficult for you to get it. Uh, but there are a ton of um, footnotes here. Uh, this is A through Q. <laughs> so you're going to have to pay attention to these footnotes because you, you don't always you know, follow the flow chart to get where you need to go. One thing I'll mention about this too before I go further is that the, um, the, the table in your textbook actually has some mistakes in it. So uh, this is one that I made myself and I've corrected those mistakes and I will make this version of the table available to you through the course website. Um, you should be able to find the mistakes because there's actually some cells in column four that would be um, logically impossible. <laughs> it means you can't possibly be in that cell. Okay, so let's take a look first at column one. So you start here and we're gonna move from left to right and eventually get you know, finer and finer until we end up in one of these cells over here on the right. So the first question you have to ask yourself, how much soil was retained on the number 200 sieve? Okay, the number 200 is the one that marks the transition from coarse grain to fine grain soil. If more than 50% of the soil is retained on the number 200 sieve, then it's a coarse grain soil. Even if it's 51% on the number 200 and 49% go through the number 200, it still is going to be a coarse grain soil based on the USCS. Okay, if 50% go through the number 200 sieve, then it's a fine grain soil. So the first division we make in column one is purely based on grain size. You do the sieve analysis, you figure out what percent passes the 200 sieve. Sometimes there are soils where we don't need to do the grain size distribution. If you have a pretty pure clay, you can tell by inspection this is all going to go through the number 200 sieve. You don't really need to go through the process of washing it through the 200 sieve. You can just go directly to the outer rig limits. All right, now within, let's say that we have a coarse grain soil, more than 50% retained on the 200. The next question is whether we have gravel or sand. Okay, or I suppose we could have cobbles or boulders, but I think we're, by the time we get to the table, we're assuming we have silt, clay, sand, gravel. All right, so um, now we take the coarse fraction, so that's just the part that was retained on the number 200 sieve, and figure out whether uh, more than 50% of that fraction is retained on the number four sieve or not. So the number four sieve is the one that, that divides the sand from the gravel. Sand goes through the number four, gravel does not. So if more than half of the coarse fraction that was retained on the 200 sieve is also retained on the number four sieve, then it's a gravel. If more than 50% of the coarse fraction goes through the number four sieve, then the soil is a sand. So our grain size curve has gotten us now through columns one and two. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is still using grain size. We're gonna look at how, mu how much uh, fines content is there. Okay, if there's less than 5% fine grain soils, then we have clean gravel or clean sand, right? So um, that would tell us now we're gonna move on to one of these two cells. If there's more than 12% fines, then we would call it gravels with fines. Okay, now you might be wondering, well, this is less than five, this is more than 12. What if it's between five and 12? where that, that's when you need to look at these uh, footnotes. There's a footnote C on both of these. So we come over to C, gravels with five to 12% fines require dual symbols. So uh, we'll come back to this because we haven't gotten to naming these symbols yet, but we're gonna have to have more than one symbol, or well, more than one grouping of two letters to classify the soil. So that's where the footnotes come in. Uh, okay, now let's look at column four. Let's say that we know we have a clean gravel. We're gonna look now at that coefficient of uniformity and the coefficient of curvature. So if the coefficient of uniformity is greater than or equal to four, that means that it's pretty well graded, right? Big coefficient of uniformity. And one is less than or equal to the coefficient of curvature is less than or equal to three. 
Then we have a well-graded gravel, and we give it the symbol GW, and it's called well-graded gravel. Uh, otherwise, basically, if this is not true, then this is true, the cell right below it. Then we have a poorly graded gravel, GP, and it, you know it's poorly graded. So this one would be soils that are really uniform, right? If the coefficient of uniformity is less than four, um, or soils that have uh, either a really low or a really high coefficient of curvature. So it could be gap graded or it could be uniformly graded to achieve this curvature um, requirement. But anyway, we call those poorly graded gravel. Sands are exactly the same thing. Um, and then, um, sorry, the sands are down here. You have SW and SP, except that the coefficient of uniformity is six instead of four. Um, okay, and then if you have a high fines content greater than 12%, we don't even do the CU and CC calculation. We now have to use Atterberg limits and figure out whether it's GM or GC. So if it's GM, if the fines fraction classifies as silt, then we would call it silty gravel. If it's GC, then it's clayey gravel. And look, there's a lot of footnotes there. So you gotta read these footnotes for sure. So F, G, and H are gonna be um, down here. So sometimes you have to add with sand. And then if the fines classify as CL, ML, in that little four to seven PI region, then you use dual symbols, GC, GM, or SC, SM. So, you know, there's a lot of footnotes. If you see a footnote, be sure to go and read it because you may need it to uh, classify the soil. Um, okay, then we come down here uh, to the silts and clays. And basically there are a bunch of words in here that tell you whether it's CL, ML, OL, CH, MH, OH, or P, and so forth. Um, for peat, you know, you'll have to just know that it's peat and classify it that way based on the organic content. Uh, if, if it's not peat, if it's going to be one of these soils here that I'm highlighting, I, I recommend not even using this table. Just go directly to the Casa Grande plasticity chart to classify it, right? So it's, it's one thing to write all this text if it's above the A-line or below the A-line, but the easiest thing that you can do is come to this chart right here. Just figure out where does it plot. Is your soil is the liquid limit here and plasticity index there? Then it's MH or OH. Is it over here? You know that that's the easiest thing to do. Is it in this hatched region? Then it's CL ML. So uh, that's better than trying to follow that that flow chart. Uh, so anyway, I think that we've got through the flow chart. Um, you would have lean clay. Um, let's see, S silt, if it's ML, it's just called silt. CH, sometimes it's called fat clay in the textbook. I prefer high plasticity clay and low plasticity clay instead of fat and lean. I think that's more common these days to use those adjectives. Uh, and then elastic silt is image. Um, okay, and some of the modifications that we have to make, you know, there's dual symbols up here. If you have five to 12% fines, um, then you have to do an Atterberg limits test. And then you would have well-graded gravel with silt, right? GWGN, if it's gravelly and the fines fraction is silty and it's between five and 12%. So pay attention to what the words that are here too. Uh, and then additionally, you have to sometimes add like with sand or with gravel. So if you have a gravel that has a significant amount of fines, 15 to 19%, then you would add these modifiers, gravel with sand. So maybe silty gravel with sand or something, or um, clayey sand with gravel. So you know you got to really go through those um, those footnotes.